Right. So it's it's two oh one, and uh, we're going to go ahead and get started here. I would like to welcome everyone to the Capital Raise Strategy Session. All right. Today, we have a guest. Uh, really, I don't even think she needs an introduction. Uh, she she's definitely well known amongst the uh, uh, the real estate industry, the commercial real estate industry. But but I would like to. Um, but today in our capital Raise strategy session, um, we're going to be talking, and, and we're honored to have to welcome Miss Esther. She's a now. Let me just give you a little bit of of uh, history, a little bit of information about her. And, and, and I'm going to leave some blanks and I'll let Miss Esther uh, complete the rest. But uh, Miss Esther is a visionary force in the commercial real estate landscape. Esther has re, uh, uh, re, uh, 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 um, um, redid the, the industry with her unwavering professionalism and timely services, establishing herself as a distinguished realtor, investor, and syndicator fund manager. Her remarkable journey over the past six years is marked by an impressive record of transactions and the substantial accumulation of commercial real estate equity, showcasing her, 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 her pr uh, proudness uh, in navigating the uh, market's complexities. Known for her exceptional uh, networking abilities, Esther has a unique talent for linking buyers, sellers, and investors rightfully earning her the reputation of a serial net worker. Beyond her professional success, Esther is an alumnus of Adelphi University holding a master's degree that, that complements her entrepreneurial spirit and philanthropic, uh, uh, philanthropic, excuse me, philanthropic efforts. She is deeply committed to her family, cherishing her role as a mother and alongside her husband, significantly contributes to their community through a nonprofit organization dedicated to aiding the underprivileged. Join us as Ms. Esther shares her insights and strategies on capital raising, drawing from her vast experience and deep sense of community and, and uh, philanthropy that under, underpins her work. Ms. Esther, I want to thank you for, for coming and being a part of our network uh, 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 this morning, uh, this afternoon. I just want to say thank you very much for joining us. So for joining Thanks us. for having me. That was quite the intro. Wow, I'm sitting here <laughs> blushing here. Thank you. <laughs> well, I know I only read just a little bit, but, <laughs> but, if, but if there are any blanks, the blanks and, and tell us a little more about Miss Esther. All right. Um, like you said, I am. I have my master's degree. I'm a non-practicing speech-language pathologist. I still have my master's. I still have my um, certificate. Uh, right now, I prefer being a real estate professional. Um, the market's been a little rough right now for the last while. So, you know, hearing hearing that, you know, hearing what I've done in the past is, you know, is nice. You know, it's been a little slower recently so it's actually been nice to <laughs> hear what i've done in the past i almost forgot um yeah it's a challenging time oh fan. well you're on mute okay there you are sorry sorry i'm on my phone my mom just called in um so i love what i do and i'm still at it working really hard trying to um connect equity for other individuals we also purchased some deals we buy office industrial retail, and I'm that's my husband's sort of division with his partners. I'm busy raising money and raising kids. That's my job. Um, I'm trying to do that. And yeah, I'm happy to answer any question you may have. Well, fantastic. What would you guys like? What would you want to hear? Fantastic, fantastic. Let, let me ask you this: uh, um, You had mentioned uh, things have slowed down a little bit. Um, Comparing to last year or even the year before, looking at now, 2024, um, has it slowed down a great deal or just some? Oh, significantly. Uh, on As a realtor, as an investor, and as a capital raiser, it's been much slower. I'm working just as hard, if not harder, but with very few results. 
Um, anyone that tells you otherwise, either they're, I don't know, either they're not saying the truth or they are fully, fully liquid and, and transacting, you know, tremendously, which is very, very few people. Um, all brokers, owners, investors, capital reserves, it's slow across the board. Right. Um, where we've closed in 20, 21, 22, we bought many properties. In the last year and a half, we only bought one um, wow. as an equity provider. Um, it's been extremely slow. There are very few investors that are putting money now into the market. Uh, a lot of them are sitting on the sidelines because of the banks, because of the interest rates, um, because just of the instability in the, you know, I guess with politics, um, insurance skyrocketed in many areas. Most deals are not penciling out. They're not adding up right now. Sellers aren't lowering their prices. And most deals out there aren't making sense to go into. The numbers just don't work. So a lot of the investors see that. And um, with all the other st st uh, instability going on, they're just holding off right now, you know, gotcha. is what I see. Okay. What made you get into capital raising? That's a good question. So I actually started as a realtor in the space, which I mm -hmm. still am. I'm a realtor. I'm still transacting. Um, and one of my clients had asked me to help him find equity. And at the time, I knew nothing about raising equity, but I figured, you know, I, I made a commission selling him a property. Why not help him? Why not do him a favor? Like, I didn't mind to do him a favor. Um, and within two phone calls, I was able to find him an equity partner. So I was like, wow, that was really cool. Uh, that was easy. And by the way, it's never been that easy before. Again, it's never been that easy again. Um, but it was like within two phone calls, I was able to find them an equity partner. So that's when I started deep diving into equity and I'm like, wow, this is, this is a whole business in itself. Um, so it's sort of like, I guess I started talking a lot. I talk a lot and people, you know, started reaching out to me for equity and it's, it kind of snowballed on its own. Um, and then I decided to challenge myself and start my own fund. Um, so that was like, since I got into equity, I wanted to start my own fund which I successfully did, syndicated several deals through the fund. Um, and yeah, I, I like to challenge myself and do this crazy stuff. Um, but it's, yeah, it's been, it's been a ride. I have not syndicated a deal in the last year and a half since the market went a little crazy. Um, just because I haven't found a deal that, that that's good enough to go for. Um, right. The truth is I haven't been trying that hard to find one. Most of what I've been doing is just connecting CoGP and JV Equity. Um, so sort of like matchmaking partners is most is most of what I've been doing in the last year and a half. Right. Um, but um, yeah, but now I'm like ready to find a good opportunity to to syndicate. But it has to be like, it has to be a really good opportunity. Right. So you said good opportunity. Um, what is your criteria for a good opportunity? Right, that's a relative uh, statement, but good means you know obviously the the sponsor has to have a solid track record, mm -hmm. uh, but before his track record, I think he has to be a good a good person. I have to like like him as an individual. Like in in Yiddish, we say he has to be a mensch, like uh, an outstanding person, like good character, right? Because um, I would think that means a lot. Um, and then that's number one. Number two, his track record has to be solid. He has to have um gone through several cycles you know in something similar in that similar market or similar asset um i want to know that he did right by his investors that he knows what he's doing in terms of the property he knows how to manage he knows how to finance um he, everything has to be checked off and then obviously i have to underwrite the deal make sure the deals make sense it doesn't matter the asset the location or the price tag that doesn't matter to me so long as within the asset location or price tag the numbers add up to that particular opportunity and there's enough meat on the bone for the investors to make a nice return. Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, Jim, you want to go ahead and take over? Sure, Daryl. Hey, Esther, uh, a couple of things that uh, were breezed over a little bit in your resume. I know that you run a nonprofit. Can you tell us just very briefly what the nonprofit is? Uh, yeah, we, we, started well we do several things but something we recently started was a soup kitchen in our community 
um, we took a, an existing restaurant and converted it into a soup kitchen. And now it sort of runs, well, there's someone that funds it. We have to keep on funding it. And it's anyone that's in need of a meal can come in at any time of the day. And there's restaurant style meal set for the, for the individual. They also have a branch where they give individuals money for the grocery. And, um, and then there's also a takeout option. Um, so that's just one thing that um, my husband got moving recently. Fantastic. Uh, is Do you run any other nonprofits or is that the primary? We partake in so many. Uh, so unfortunately, oh. there's no shortage of uh, organizations that were you know, individuals that need. A lot of what we do is just we like to help individuals, not more, not so much as an organization. We're more like focused on the individual. Uh, unfortunately, we know t way too many people that are just not making ends meet right now. Um, and, you know, we've been trying to help as many as possible. It's it's very sad to see the need out there. Um, and it's it's very hard. Like, I wish I could help everyone. And, I wish I could help everyone. That's That's and, a big motivator for me to make more money because I just want to be able to help everyone. Yeah. And in, in your uh, in your LinkedIn profile, under your contact information, is the nonprofit listed if, if folks want to reach out to you and, uh, and uh, offer help? That's really nice. Um, I don't think it's listed there because this is a brand new one. Um, I don't even know if it has an official name. It's just a, a restaurant that we took over. I have to. I'm going to ask my husband for the information. Okay. Well, if he's, you uh, he's, post, uh, we'll... he's taking he's taking charge. On that one, a close. We'll, we'll keep our eyes open on LinkedIn for you to make a post about your nonprofit. So, yeah, okay. yeah, thank you. I'm, well, I'm involved in so many things. I'm involved in an organization called Friendship Circle, which helps individuals with special needs. Um, as a speech language pathologist, I used to work with those individuals. Um, so I, my, I have, you know, they have a special place in my heart. I work with. Um, I had a son that was in the hospital for four and a half months. I had many organizations that helped me at the time. Um, just providing meals for my family, meals for me in the hospital. So all those organizations, I'm, you know, they have my support now. Um, I there's a whole list of organizations. If anyone is looking to to partake, um, I could definitely put something together. And if folks want to learn more about you, Esther, what's the, where are you the most active? I know you are super active across all platforms, but. Uh, where is the easiest way for folks to reach out and get to know you and make contact? I'd say LinkedIn. I'm very um over there, very um active on LinkedIn and also Instagram, pretty active there. Okay. And a couple other things I wanted to highlight. I know that uh, this has been really the last 12 months have been very challenging for everyone uh, in the industry. I think the only folks that are um, are really jumping up and down right now are the folks setting on just large, large, large amounts of cash. Um, but uh, the mom and pop operators have really been hit very hard over the last 12 months. Uh, capital raisers in that space have been hit very hard. Uh, and it's it's been a, a struggle for everyone with the interest rate environments. And it's almost been entirely the interest rate environment and and to your point, the insurance cost. Uh, I think those are the two biggest factors in in what's happened over the last twelve uh, twelve to eighteen months. But uh, during that time frame, you also were honored by a, a lot of uh, different organizations for the impact that you made uh, in the industry. And I know that, um, that uh, a couple of them that I had uh, noticed was the 40 under 40 from the Young Jewish Professionals uh, Organization and the uh, American Apartment Owners Association. You were honored uh, by them for the best multifamily equity expert. And then LinkedIn uh, honored you as one of the most impactful uh, people on LinkedIn for sales and marketing. Was there any that I missed? Did you uh, get some more awards that I didn't didn't find? Oh, you, you did a good job searching that. Uh, anything that you missed over there? I'm trying to think. Um, 40 under 40. I oh, I was featured on The Real Deal. Uh, I wrote an article for the Commercial Observer. Go check that out. Um, that's not an honor, but it's just an article that I that they published, um, which is which is pretty cool, I think. Uh, on distressed uh, opportunities. Check that out. It's on my LinkedIn uh, main page. Um, I also contributed to an article for BizNow. 
Um, I was, I spoke at the IMN. I don't even know. I can't keep up. You're doing a good job. <laughs> so I, yeah, I say all that just so that yeah. everyone that's listening uh, uh, on the internet or folks that are going to see this in the future on YouTube or some other social media channel, uh, that you know what you're doing, you know how to do this, and you've been very, very successful at it. Uh, and there's a lot to be learned. And Thank I know you. that many of us uh, that go down this path struggle with it, struggle with it mightily. And and uh, there's a lot of different reasons. Very few uh, have the kind of success that you've had. And very few have figured out why uh, or how to do that. And so I, I would be interested in your perspective. Uh, you know, we're basically almost everyone on this call is either a fund manager or a, or a sponsor or is in this space of trying to raise capital for deals. And so what would be your feedback to everyone? You know, what what do you think made you successful? Uh, and and what advice would you give someone else that like, OK, you're starting out. This is like the top two or three things you must do. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Um, when 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 times are you know more tough, it's hard to think of all those you know that success. So it's uh, nice to be reminded. Um, what I did. So first of all, I I really believe that giving charity, um, you know, when you're good to other people, it comes back to you. As crazy as that sounds, I really believe that that's um, helped me a lot. Um, so I really like you know. I really recommend, you know, for many reasons that everyone give. When you give, things come back to you. I really believe that. Um, second of all, I work hard. You know, I work really hard. I don't, I have, I have a bunch of children, um, so I'm very busy with my kids. But in between kids and transacting, I'm always out there networking, working, speaking, writing, um, contributing, posting on LinkedIn and social media. Um, I work around the clock. I don't sit and watch movies. Um, I'm not, I don't have, I don't have time for too many hobbies. Um, be, either, you know, raising money for deals, raising kids, transacting, brokering. Uh, there's, there's literally no stopping and it's, and it's, uh, you know, I'm in this already for a few years. There's just no stopping. Even when times are tough, you can't let it get to you. Um, you have to keep on going. You just wake up every day and just keep hustling away. That's that's the bottom line. So the effort that you put in, and the time you put in, and the you know the energy, and not not letting the burnout get to you. So you said um, to give to give uh, and to give back, and it reminds me of the Bob Berg book, uh, The Go Giver. Uh, and and I uh, I know that a lot of us uh, have really tried to uh, put that into action in our own lives. But to you, what does that mean when you say give? As it relates to raising capital, as it relates to uh, the folks in this industry, how do you give to them? So whenever I can, whenever I possibly can, I like to get onto you know such conferences uh, or speak or just share my knowledge. You know, whatever. I'm not an I'm not an expert, right? I I know what I know, but I'm if I'm able to help anyone in any capacity, um, as much as time allows me to, I'm very happy to. Yeah. So, you know, things like today, uh, obviously, that's giving back, giving to the community, speaking at a conference is giving back and giving to the community. I know that you do a lot of JV connections and trying to make those connections happen. Uh, and um, and I don't know if you get to participate in those deals or if you're just doing that because you feel it's, it's the right thing to do or a good thing to do for you in the long run. So I, I think that all of those things speak to ways of you to give back. And, and um, some people will look at this as just purely marketing, that you need to do this. You're very, very active on social. But in my mind, that's another way of giving back because you are sharing very valuable information with the community on a daily basis across several different platforms. So I, I think all of those are great examples of giving back and trying to help people out um, and, and yeah, educate just, them in a way to do it. 
Thank you. Just a point on that. When I had just gotten started in real estate, without knowing too much about the industry, I was I was fairly new. And if you go back and listen to podcasts that I was on, you'll hear the background of how I got involved and coming from speech language pathology, moving to real estate. So it's a huge jump. Uh, why I did it, etc. But when I had just gotten started, I started writing for some magazines, um, and I started inter- interviewing individuals and writing a segment called "Learning from the Best." Um, and that helped me learn from other people. So I was, I was sort of doing it to highlight someone else's success and also learn from them. Um, little did I know that that would help me establish a rapport with those individuals as well. As well, and I also worked with many of them down the line. So I didn't think of that when I was trying to highlight their success and write about them, but it did turn out to help me. So that's just one example of how you do something for someone else and it comes back to help you. So um, I, I want to ask, uh, Jenny Allen, are you able to come off mute? Yes, I am. Hey, no, Jenny. No. Uh, I wanted to grab you before I lost you because we, mi- we miss you. Um, uh, being on the uh, on the uh, show and wanted to make sure that uh, I don't know. Do you and Esther know each other? Actually, Esther, do you remember me? I remember you. I'm trying to see who you are. Sorry. All right, is your camera on? Yeah, it is. Oh, hi, hi, hi. Yeah, hey, Alan. We we hi, talked. Hi. Uh, we we uh, talked about the Burgundy in Dallas. Uh, two yes. Years ago. Yes, yes, yes. That's been a while. So the reason I brought you on, uh, Jenny, is uh, to see if you had uh, the uh, opportunity to ask Esther a a couple of questions. What what questions would you have for her? Um, Speaking of the Burgundy, why did we not partner up on that? Do you remember? I think we tried a lot, right? We tried. We tried to. um, I I, have worked on so many properties. It's hard to remember that right. one I, I remember you and i remember the property i remember working on it but i work on hundreds of properties a day right um so i apologize for not remembering everything but i definitely tried right yeah Could be at the uh, time maybe the timing was that we didn't have anyone i don't remember exactly what the reason was but i promise I you i try, you try were, every single time yeah i remember that you were very very busy so that might have just been the factor there maybe that's possible I have to go back and check exactly yeah. what happened. So I the t- other question I, take, I, I take have notes. For you. I have, I have notes on every single deal that I work on. Exactly, yeah. exactly who it goes to, like who I try to reach out. You know, within that criteria. Let's say it was in Dallas, multifamily. So I go back and, um, you know, I go to all the investors that would potentially be interested in that opportunity, and um, and go back and see, you know, who who I attempted to and why it didn't work. Um, okay. yep. Yes, yeah, so I wouldn't be able to tell you that offhand, but I've only no, what, syndicated, what? just to clarify, I've only syndicated a few deals. All the other deals that I've worked on um, were co GP JV structures. So yours was most likely a co GP JV structure, right? Right. Um, because in, for the SEC, I have to be very careful. Right. So it could be at that time, I didn't have a single investor that wanted to come in with whatever size check you needed for that opportunity it's right. not you know not every not every single deal that comes my way finds the equity some some deals yeah. do some deals don't it's uh it's um it's you know it's, i just keep on trying there's i'm working right now on about 20 deals how many are going to come through i don't know i've been working on so many deals in the last year very very few came through very few came through and so even you- uh even like now, I worked on three deals that were about to close. Three deals. One of them I worked on for nine months, two of them for six months. As they were about to close, they blew up. <laughs> so there's so oh. many factors into every single deal, why it works, why it doesn't work, you know. Yeah. I, I think that uh, the specifics of any given deal, uh, there's a million reasons why they won't work and usually only one or two why they will. Exactly. And so most often we lose a lot more deals than we are successful at. But Jenny, did you have a question more specific to raising capital or uh, maybe uh, a secret that Esther has uh, about how she's been able to? So Esther, you, you mentioned that um, your first um, equity was way too easy and it kind of gave you false confidence. Uh, uh, 
what, what, when did you, what, what did you do to get your confidence? What did your first one or two years of serious capital raising look like? Oh, I raised a significant amount of money in the first uh, three years. Um, I guess, I guess I got lucky, you know, the market was easy then the last year and a half has been like, uh, torture. Um, and talk about confidence there. Uh, false hope. What I do. So I've syndicated deals. Like I said, I syndicated some deals in Texas, San Antonio, Corpus Christi, etc. Uh, most of what I've been doing is connecting co-GP JV equity. Um, so, you know, like I said, some deals worked, some deals didn't. One deal that I connected one deal was a 40 million dollar equity check so you know that that makes my numbers jump a lot within just one deal um some deals go some deals don't like like jim said it has to do with you know the sponsors has to do with the the environment some people think some markets are oversaturated every investor has their different criteria and what's interesting also is that investors criteria keep on changing especially now you know with a uh, People are going into different markets. I was working now on a deal in Georgia, and I think it's a great deal. Um, but then I started doing more research. Georgia right now, a lot of investors didn't want to put money into, and I was like, why not? It's such a good deal. Georgia has very strict rules now with a you know rent control, for example. Um, it's it's worse than New York, so investors are you know hesitant to go in right now to to such you know such a uh, such a state that it's very very hard to get a non-paying tenant out. Um, you know, that's just one example. There's like, like Jim said, there's, you know, you can find a million reasons for a deal not to work out. It's very hard to find a deal that does work out. And in the past, people weren't asking as many questions as they are now. Um, so nobody paid as much attention to the debt that the individuals were taking out, whether it was a fixed rate or a floating rate. Um, people just, you know, they didn't look at every nitty gritty thing, which they probably should have. But nowadays, individuals are asking so many more questions about every single opportunity. So uh, Alicia, my co-host, uh, one of my co-hosts on uh, the weekly show has uh, a question, maybe a couple of questions. Alicia, take it away. I do, Jim. Thank you. Hi, Esther. It's always great Hi. to see you. Hi, likewise. Um, you were so inspiring on our GOB Inc. call. I think it's been like maybe about a year, year and a half. So uh, welcome to this platform. Thank Are you. you still using spreadsheets to track all of this? <laughs> oh, I'm terrible. I'm doing it the real old fashioned way. I have actually notes, um, not even spreadsheets. Um, I have I have a guy that works for me that he probably does the spreadsheets, but I have a good old fashioned notes. Um, and he also runs my CRM. Um, but I have I just I take notes on every individual I speak with because I, I speak to so many. I used to remember everything. Okay, then I had kids. They stole my brain. Um, <laughs> but I, I have to write. I write down every individual I speak with, and if it's an opportunity that we're working on, I'll, I write down the opportunity that we're, you know, discussing, and then I write down every single individual that shows interest, or I send the deal to, and I'll take notes, and then I can I go back and see, you know, and I have notes on why they did or didn't request more information or, or, you know, what, who went for the opportunity, you know, I have everything written down. I'm um, in good old fashioned notes. I should figure out how to use spreadsheets. I love it. I love it. Your CRM will help. So if they show you how to use it, that'll definitely help a lot. Um, how, so you had mentioned previously that you're looking at hundreds of deals and, and I I've seen you actually do that. Um, how do you prefer to receive deals and do you have a specific criteria for that? That's a good question. Um, so I work on any code GP JV deal that comes my way. Um, I know it doesn't matter the asset, the location or the price tag, so long as you're under contract and it has to be commercial real estate. That's my criteria. Um, I don't take money up front. I don't prom. I don't make promises. That's why I don't take money up front. It's only a success fee, if it works out. Um, I don't think anyone should pay anyone money up front, especially nowadays when it's so hard to find uh, equity. And I know a lot of the guys that go out raising equity, they come to me for 
for, the, for help. Um, you know, a lot of broker dealers and other people are coming to me for help. It's not easy right now. And they're the ones that are asking individuals to sign. I'm like, why would anyone sign right now? It just doesn't make sense to me. Well, but that's, um, that's just how I do it. I, it started for me as a hobby and it kind of took off. Um, I never intended to, you know, make this into a business. It kind of happened and I'm, I'm flowing with it and i um, just doing my best. Awesome. Thank you. And I think you kind of touched on my final question, which was, are you just investing in multifamily? So you will do some retail, industrial, maybe special use. So uh, we personally um, purchase office industrial retail, not even multi. I do own multi because I've syndicated deals and I'm a co-GP on several. So I happen to own a lot of multi. Um, but in terms of raising for others, it doesn't matter the asset. If it's co GP JV, I'm talking about co GP JV structures right. where I'm connecting sp- um, general partners together that have a say in the deal. Unlike, it's not the same as limited partners. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. And always great to sure. see you. Likewise, Jim? thank you. Daryl, Jim. So, Esther, um, what does your. The, the first few years that you started doing this, um, and, and I imagine like most people, the first investors that you called were people that you knew very well, people that were already in your phone book, even if you had never done this before, didn't have a CRM, and these were just friends and family that you knew, maybe work associates. But uh, as you started to grow beyond that, who are your investors and where are you finding them? So actually that wasn't the case. Um, No one in my circle, not friends, not family has money. So that was not the case. Um, I, once I got into real estate, I started going to like a ton of meetups and just connecting with people and meeting people all day. And those were the initial investors that came into my deals. Um, individuals that I had just gotten to know. Um, yeah, I have family and friends actually that have invested in my in my uh, syndications. You know, as a limited partner, they put in a little money, um, but just very little, or you know. But it was actually other individuals that I had just gotten to know from the industry that came into my deals. So, would you say that uh, all of the meetups that you attended, virtuals? in-person conferences, that's where most of your investors came from, those connections. Definitely. I made a lot of new friends. Fantastic. And I'm going to ask this, even though I think you've already answered it, are there any any things that you're doing to try to multiply your time? Uh, In other words, there's 24 hours in the day for everyone. And when you have children, you subtract a big portion of those 24 hours that you can work on business. Um, And there's multiple ways that people try to claw back some of that time, whether it's hiring an assistant, uh, VAs to handle, you know, certain other responsibilities, or maybe an app that does something for you, like uh, manage some social media interaction, stuff like that. Are you using any of those? I know you did mention you have at least one assistant. Correct. I only have one assistant right now um, that's working for me. Um, yes, I am a very busy person. Like uh, Jeannie said, sometimes I can't get to everything. Like I'm, I always feel like I'm forever catching up, forever catching up. Um, like I, I just don't have enough hours of the day. So I, my kids always come first. So that's my priority. Um, kids are first. Then, you know, yes, going to meetups takes time. And going, to, you know, everything takes so much time, right? Um, I try to, uh, what's the word? Um, oh, forgetting my, my head's not working now. To, you know, give other people tasks, whatever I don't need to do, to delegate or to outsource um, any minor task that I could not do. Like, I don't have time to look at my house, for example. Like, you know, cooking, cleaning, laundry, that's taken, um, you know, that's gone to the back, the back burner. I uh, have other individuals doing that, but that's also been challenging. Finding the right help, you know, can be a challenge. 
Um, I have one individual right now. He works for me part time, um, not even full time right now, just because it's been super slow and I don't have enough work even to give him. Um, I wish I did. I wish I had more right now. But he was working for me full time at one point. He does run my CRM for me. He was running my um, my my uh, invest next, whatever the um, the portal for the you know the money that comes in the back end of the fund. He was running. He speaks. He helps me with the attorneys. He's like um, helping me with the accountants, just getting all. So I do try to get as much help as possible. Um, I am still kind of new. I still consider myself new in this business. I'm only in it for a few years. Um, although I've done a lot, I still kind of consider myself new. And I hope to one day hire so many more people. But um, as of now, we're starting it. You know, I'm still. I feel like I'm still starting. So. Um, we're learning, adapting, growing, trying to, I, I try to juggle every day as it goes. No two days are alike for me. Like today, my daughter had to play at school. So I had to go um, to her school in the morning. Um, you know, normally I'd have meetings where I'd be working out or, uh, you know, just doing whatever, something else now, just getting my day started. So yeah, my kids are, com they come first and every day is like, it's a whole new adaption. There are no two days alike. So we are, uh, we've got roughly about 20 minutes left to go. I don't see anyone with their hand raised uh, unless Alicia. Alicia. Did, did you raise your hand again, Alicia? I did. I did. Okay. Um, so, so Esther, you kind of touched on this, but in a typical day where you plan to capital raise, how do you structure your day? when that's going to be your focus and balancing like life stuff? That's a good question. So just to, I do this a very, in a very non fancy way. So I have, like I said, I take notes on every individual I speak with and I, I know where they want to invest, what their criteria is, uh, what assets, what locations they want to invest, what's their general price point. I have my guy put it into the CRM, but an opportunity comes up we try to fit the opportunity with individuals criteria. Let's say I have, I'm working right now on a hotel to multi conversion in Jacksonville. It's a real deal I'm working on. Um, I'll go and see, you know, who, which investors would be interested in conversions, who couldn't handle that size deal. Um, who likes that, you know, who likes the market, uh, who's ready you know, for construction and holding, who can wait for money. It doesn't have to, it's not a cash flowing right now situation. So there's so many factors that go into every opportunity and we kind of narrow it down. Hi, Steve. We kind of narrow it down. Uh, you have the mobile home parks, right? Uh, I've got the mobile home parks and then I've also got note investing as well that I'm doing. Okay, cool. Excellent. Um, see, I did remember that. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so I do. I do try to uh, take note of everyone's criteria and you know fit, kind of match it, so that my my assistant helps me and the CRM that we set up helps match the investors with the criteria and you know the, and the opportunity um, so, that we're looking to raise for. Awesome. Have you had investors that are willing to invest with like a cash, uh, average cash on cash return of? like maybe uh, 1.7 times their equity investment and maybe an IRR of 4%. You have a specific opportunity that you're looking at? <laughs> okay. uh, every single investor is looking for something else. I have right now only been working on co-GP, JV opportunities. Right. So I'm not always looking at those metrics right now. I'm more looking for individuals that are ready to write i'm working on some one opportunity i'm working on needs over 45 million dollars um but it could be higher it could be lower to me it doesn't matter you know what the equity check is so long as it's a co-gp jv oppor opportunity so i'm not necessarily looking for those metrics right um individuals are right now looking for you know the cap rate or the stabilized cap rate or the yield on cost or i don't know so everyone has their everyone has their metric that they look at. Some one in the one investor I, I'm working right now with, he doesn't even care about the the cash on cash because or you know or the what he's going to receive right now because he's a long term holder. 
Um, so everyone is looking for something else. In, in the last while, I was, I, I, and I'm still doing this. I have a lot of individuals come to me for equity and I try to help them find equity. But because it's so difficult now to find equity, I'm kind of doing it reverse. I'm working now with investors that I know are putting out money and I know are super liquid and they're buying actively. And I'm doing the opposite. I'm trying to find their criteria and go out and find opportunities for them to invest in. Um, so right now I'm working with a few investors and we, we're looking for um, self-storage opportunities. Either This is either to JV or to buy out, right? Mm-hmm. Self-storage, mobile home parks, RV parks. Um, any asset with a government lease, it could be a HUD deal, half contract. Uh, we're also looking for gas stations and car washes. So right now I'm I'm sort of doing the opposite of what I did until now. And I'm looking for opportunities for the investors that I know are putting out money. I love that you're flying your wings and, and experiencing a lot of different things. Um, that's wonderful. So my last question for you um, is, is, have you worked on development projects? And how how did that look on the raising capital side? Um, yes, I have worked on many development projects. Um, same for me, it's the same. For me, I just see it as connecting. Um, that's why I don't care which asset I work in. You know, I was working on several assets at once and someone's like, why don't you focus on one? I'm like, which one should I focus on? Um, to me, I just see it as connecting, like I'm a connector. Um, so for me, it doesn't matter you know, if it's a ground up opportunity, uh, you know, right now I'm working, let's say on a ground up, believe it or not, office building in Miami. Um, it happens to be a really good opportunity. So to me, it doesn't matter if it's ground up or existing, it's still sourcing equity for commercial real estate. That's how I see it. Just trying to connect. So uh, we did have a question in the chat. Uh, Lola wanted to know what CRM you're using. Um, I think my guy's using HubSpot. Okay. And but, uh, but don't ask me about it because I'm not a tech person <laughs> at all. That's why I have the guy taking care of it. It's a good site. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Well, I, I will follow up on that. Um, Esther, did did you allow him to pick that what he's comfortable with? Or did you research and say, no, I, I only want to use HubSpot and this is why? No, I let him do it. Okay. Yeah, I see I delegate. And I work on my strengths. My strength is connecting with people. I'm not that good at technology. Um, I'm not that good at, you know, figuring that out. I, I mean, when I did invest, when I chose Investnext, I did do a lot of research. Um, so I was actually the one to choose Investnext. I did study like a lot of programs. I went through so many and I interviewed. I did put my mind into it. But when I don't have the time to put my mind into it, I let someone else do it. Thanks for the question, Lola. So Jeannie has another question. Yes. Um, So you mentioned that you are GP on a lot of deals. And as we all know, uh, you have to have a job in the syndication, in in the operations to legitimately be a GP. So what is, uh, what job do you usually take? Oh, uh, so really, so I'm a GP. Um, I, I do so many things. Um, the in between are with the tax people, with the you know the attorneys. Um, on every call, um, you know, just providing my feedback. I'm very, very involved on so many levels. I'm not boots on the ground, and I'm not underwriting the deal, but everything else, whatever I I do, whatever I could do for my house is I'm involved with. So how many active deals do you have right now and how do you squeeze the time in to do just what you said? Everything takes so much time. Um, well, active, I, I we own many, many deals, but uh, in terms of the ones that I syndicated, you're asking? Yeah. So I'm a GP on one large deal. Um, I w- came in as a fund of funds into others. Um, yeah, everything takes a lot of time. It's yeah, You should see my schedule. It's like every minute is accounted for. If I don't write something so like, down, it doesn't happen. I have my schedule is jam packed. So, so do you have a fund of funds? You said, correct. And how how are you liking that? Is that a model you're going forward with? Um, I've uh, if, if it's a good opportunity, you know, why not? If there, if I find another good opportunity, 
why not? I, there, there are some attorneys lately that are saying that you have to have a certain, um, you have to have a certain certificate in order to raise a certain amount under uh, as a fund to fund manager. Um, different attorneys say different things. I think it's something new, so just check with that. Um, but yeah, if I find a good opportunity, you know, and and it makes sense in terms of my fees and you know the, the returns the investors are going to get, then why not? Okay, thanks. I'm always listening to opportunities. So we've got another uh, 14 minutes. Uh, do we have some other questions from the uh, gallery? Well, that's the, I wanted to ask you a question. Um, I, I was listening to everything and and I was also thinking about some of the things I had to go through on my first capital raise. Um, but the question that I have, when you're reaching out to your investors, um, some, you know, I may happen to use say email or text or, or uh, at, at Jim say, jump on the phone. And I believe that, um, what do you find to, to be more helpful and get you closer to your goal of getting that capital? Um, so it's, it comes also down to like how much time I have again. Um, so okay. initially, initially back to my assistant, he sends out every deal we work on, we send out a very, very basic summary to investors that we think may be interested. A very vague summary, like not even the address, not specific. We send out something very vague. And then if anyone's interested, they, they reply, please send me more information. Um, so initially we're sending out an email or a text or you know, whatever. Right. And I then if they're, have, if they're interested, I, I wonder why the... Sorry about that. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, so that's how we start initially. And then if they, if they're interested in more information, we'll send them more information. And then if they like the deal, if li they like what they're saying, that's when we get on the call and we get the, in the sponsor on the call. And that's when we start talking in person. Um, and eventually we'll, meet up if you know if that's necessary if that's what they want every deal is structured differently but initially right. we send out a, a text and then an email with the info and then and then we meet on on a call and zoom on, in person however when you do find a deal that when you do find a, do you ever have do you have someone on your team that will underwrite that deal or or do you have that particular team come and and walk you through uh walk you through the steps on how they acquire their numbers that's a very good question um when i raised from limited partners through my fund i i did underwrite the deal for myself regardless of what the sponsor said i went and underwrote the deal i had somebody else look at it i you know i vetted it fully i vetted the location the sponsor etc if i'm raising from if i'm connecting code gps and jvs i yeah. do not underwrite the deal Gotcha. Um, okay. because most individuals that are coming in with such large checks are going to underwrite it regardless. Mm -hmm. um, and in that case, it's not my responsibility. Uh, it's only my responsibility when I'm raising from limited partners. So when I'm connecting code GPs and JVs, I am not underwriting the deal. Gotcha. gotcha. Are there certain, um, with, with things being, t uh, I'm going to say with things being a, a little slower, when it comes to raising capital because of the way the, the economy is and the market, um, are you now willing to look into uh, markets that you haven't probably thought about, you know, like further out Midwest or, or somewhere like that? Have that? Are you open to any of those type of investments? Uh, well, I was working nationwide even before. Okay. Okay. Um, now I am maybe uh, I'm still working out the same as I did before. I'm just with much less results, um, you know, more, less things closing and less money, you know, coming in. Um, I'm working just as hard. But in terms of us personally investing, we are going, let's say, even out out of uh, out of the states to invest in different opportunities, just because you know we got to You can't just stay put. You got to keep on finding new opportunities. You have to pivot. We're looking to other opportunities, even outside of real estate. Um, so, 
you just have to keep your eyes open. You you have I, I personally keep on listening to opportunities. I don't say no. I actually talking about all these conveniences and you know finding easier ways to work. I did find a tech program and that's surprising for me because I'm not a tech person, but I found this program that I'm looking into now and they're they're trying to get me to partner with them and join the team, maybe to raise for them and just promote it and put my own deals on the, it's a certain platform. So um, I might get into that. Right. Um, and that's like, it's like real estate and tech. Um, so yeah, keep your ears on, you know, eyes open to different opportunities. It's, uh, it's, you know, you got to do what works, right? If, if this is not working right now, you have to broaden your horizon of opportunities and, you know, just look at it from a little further back and see what else um, can you help? You know, I have, I have, I have kids to feed. I have tuition to pay. I don't have a choice. I have to keep on pivoting. You know, I have to keep on uh, seeing what's out there. Um, but you can't stay stuck in your little box. You have to right. um, see what else is out there in the world. And sometimes you got to move lanes. As much as I love, you know, doing what I'm doing. If it's, you know, if I need another source, something I'm going to be out there looking, and I can't stick. I can't get stuck. I have to. Um, you know, just keep an open mind. Right. So I want to, I want to dig a little deeper into what you were saying, because I, I want to, this next question is going to be focused more so towards new investors, those who are just getting into this investing game, raising capital, right? What advice would you give to someone that's new to getting into capital raising they don't have, you know, it's a lot that they probably don't have that they should have, right? Thinking about how when you first got started, what advice would you give new uh, capital raisers so that they can be successful? Um, that's a good question. Um, newer capital raisers. I would say that right now, when you're getting involved in this business, don't expect to make any money. <laughs> nowadays if you want to get into this business you should just join as many calls like this um read as many books join as many meetups as you can keep on learning now is the time to learn you might make a deal but don't expect it you know now keep your expectations really low now is the time to meet people learn the market right now is really slow especially if you haven't done this before you know there's also depends if people are coming in and trusting you if you're coming in as a fund manager and you're raising money from limited partners is a limited partner putting money with you they have to really trust you so you also have to develop that name so i don't know if you're going to do that now i don't know maybe you will maybe you won't you know the markets right. it's rough you know even if you're doing everything right doesn't mean that the investors are going to you know trust you or place money with you or you know, or have the money to place, you know, the opportunity has to be right. The timing has to be right. So many factors have to align. But if you want to get into it, now is a really, really good time to learn. Fantastic. 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 Um, are there any books that you would recommend to us so that we could read in, in reference to capital raising? Oh, I, I promise you, I don't think I read any book about capital. <laughs> um, I probably listened to a lot of podcasts. Okay, I, what have, podcasts? I, I drive a lot. Uh, what podcast? That's a good question. I've listened to so many in the past. Everything. Like, um, I have to be careful because I've been on so many shows. I don't want to. <laughs> I, I don't want to insult uh, some people and not name them. But there's so many. I mean, okay, okay. Bigger Pockets is a big one. Go on. There's so much information there. Okay. Just, All right. Yeah. You just just uh, <laughs> search online. That's the cool thing. You can find so much free information online you know a lot of these right. meetups cost money a lot of these masterminds cost money i've never done a mastermind um not because of the money but because i mean the money could be one thing like um but also like I, I didn't do it because of timing like i can't i cannot commit myself to every monday of the month to join a you know a, a call you know my kids I, I can never know you know every day is a different schedule so that personally never worked for me, but also masterminds are super expensive. 
um, if you could join one, it's great. Mm -hmm. But there's so much free information online. Take advantage of it. Just Google search and try to make sure you're finding your information from a reliable source. So you want right. to see if the individual that you're, you know, that you're listening to, you want to hear what they've done. You want to see, you know, what what track record they actually have. Someone came to me uh, recently. They asked me if they should join a certain uh, meetup or program or whatever it was. Um, I said, I never heard of this real estate investor. You know, I'm in the business for a while. I, I thought I knew every, I thought I knew a lot of people. I haven't heard of this one. So just do your research, you know, do your, do, you have to do your due diligence even on learning. Um, like, you know, when you read a study, you have to find out who's sponsoring the study. The same thing when you're joining a mastermind program or even listening to a podcast or whatever, find out what the individual has done and find out their intention about why they're, you know, promoting a certain thing or do a little right. due diligence. Okay. Okay. So I'll um, that... My shameless plug right there for the GOB network. Uh, if you're looking for an educational platform yep. and don't want to spend 50 grand for it, uh, take advantage of uh, everything that we've gathered over the last 40 years and, and we're putting out there it is by invitation only. You have to, we're a closed network. You have to know someone who's a member to join. Uh, but uh, at this point, all the information is 100% free. Oh, yeah. Oh, and Jim, yeah. I know Jim has been working on this for a really long time, putting his heart and soul into it for years. Definitely check it oh, yeah. out. So Best, Esther, I wanna... you, had talked ahead, about, you had talked about... Uh, being ready to pivot and invest uh, in asset classes that you may not be familiar with today, but that's where the opportunity um, is. And, and so you have to, you know, look for those opportunities at any given time. Uh, if you equate our industry, um, whether that's private equity or commercial real estate, um, and, and also I would say the stock market, you're always looking for the next opportunity. Um, and not all of us are able to invest in things like startups, angel investing. We don't have the opportunity to get into those, but we can look at, at um, shows like this where people may have a fund that's investing in startups or in fintech, uh, in angel investing, and you can get in that way. So, uh, you know, those are our opportunities people can be asking for, but you can't do it if you're not actively looking for them and making contacts and reaching out. But my question for you is, do you, I know a lot of people are really big right now uh, and have been for a year or two, maybe three or four. Uh, crypto has been a very hot topic uh, and seems to be very um, divided, either very much for, very much like I'm going to wait and see. I, I'm I'm way too conservative for that. Um, do you have any input, or have you guys been looking at crypto? I am not an expert at crypto at all. Um, I try. I honestly didn't spend too much time trying to understand it. I don't get it as of yet, but I do hear that it's making a comeback. So I think I have to start looking into it a little more. Um, I I hear that it's really going to take on soon that's what it sounds like like for a while it went quiet and i thought it was a joke like i always thought it would be but i i have to start listening and learning more about it a little bit because i i i'm and the stock just went up the crypto stock just went up and they're really saying that it's gonna come back into real estate so people are gonna be transacting i mean i don't know enough about it but i think i should start learning about it and what about note investing or uh, or distressed uh, distressed notes in in hard money lending? Are those areas that you guys have started to look at, or is it just not a space that you're interested in at this time? So it's interesting. So I I've been approached by so many companies to join them and raise, whether they were hard money, uh, pref equity, mez, um, you know, uh, even startups. I, I I've been approached. I have by over 20 companies to join. Um, and I've looked into a lot of them. Um, most of them I didn't join because uh, I didn't I didn't connect with the individual. Um, one of them I really wanted to join with this top company uh, asked me to come on and help them raise. They're more like a rescue capital fund. 
but um, they weren't offering offering me something that made sense. Um, and I'm just a little crazy. I love the challenge of raising money. So I'm looking for a good company to join. So I'm out there, you know, doing a lot of research and trying to find all these companies. But it's interesting. I, and why did I do this? Because I actually foresaw that that common equity is going to be replaced by pref equity. I saw that happening a while ago. And that's exactly what happened. How many pref equity companies joined and started? There's so many. And um and it really, private equity really took off more than it was before. It's like a, you know, a lot of individuals that were placing common equity now went it now went into prep because it's it's more secure. Um, and so I really wanted to join those, you know, those companies, but um, I haven't yet found one company that made sense for me to join in terms of making sense for me, well, making sense for the, um, you know, for what I like. For, you know, for the company. Um, Esther, we, uh, I, I think we just me? lost your volume. Oh, do you hear me now? Uh, very, it's it's almost like your microphone disconnected from your Bluetooth. Yeah, I had to plug my phone in. Sorry. Oh, we are, we oh, are at the top of, yeah, I can hear you. We are at the top of the hour. Yeah. Uh, so, Esther, is there anything you want to leave us with before we uh, thank you for, for being with us and, give, and being so generous with your time? My pleasure. Do you guys hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, no, I just want to say, like, um, be out there, look at opportunities, keep, you know, uh, keep on reading, keep on learning, keep on meeting, um, listen to as many podcasts as you can, try to go to as many meetups as you can. That That, that didn't change. Uh, keep your eyes and ears open to different opportunities, sometimes even outside of what you're currently doing. I don't know, maybe look, learn about crypto. I'm going to probably start doing that. Um, and if I can help in any way, as much as my time allows, I'm more than happy to. All right. Uh, again, uh, thank everyone for being here. I really appreciate it. Uh, make sure that you reach out to Esther on LinkedIn if you're not connected with her. Uh, connect with her, follow her uh, social media there, and uh, make sure that uh, you bring a friend with you next week. And uh, we really hope to see everyone. If there's a guest that you would really like to see or a repeat guest that you'd like us to bring back, uh, please make sure and comment on social media to let us know. Uh, and we'll do the best we can to, to make that happen for you. So don't forget every other Tuesday, Daryl, when's our next meetup Tuesday morning? For underwriting, uh, our next uh, Tuesday commercial with the family mastermind underwriting is the nineteenth of March. So please come out. We have a guest speaker. Do we know that, who that is? Yeah, it's going. Um, it's going to be uh, Natalie Dumont from Walker and Dunlop. Because not only should you understand underwriting or uh, how we underwrite, but you need to understand the connection between underwriting uh, underwriting the way the bank wants you to underwrite, the way your okay. lender wants you to underwrite. Yeah, so, understanding the bank's yeah. underwriting as opposed to our underwriting is Correct. super, super, super important. So, so make sure you're there. Thank you. And Alicia, uh, for all the ladies of the GOB network, uh, when is the GOB Inc. meet? So GOB Inc. meets the second Wednesday of every month. So we had our meeting uh, earlier this morning really good. We have a, a speaker next month uh, scheduled. Uh, her name is Sapphire Wilder. She has a phenomenal um, experience. So looking forward to all of you signing up to attend. And we're dropping a lot of the links to these sessions in the chat. So make sure that you're able to save them. And uh, the uh, Arizona meetup is when the GOB Arizona meetup in yes. person? Yes. So our GOB Network Arizona meetup is the third Tuesday of every month. And we have, um, I don't know why her name, her last name is Winkle. Oh, good Lord. I think it's Natalie Winkle. Um, she is speaking this month on the third Tuesday of the month. We're all on Zoom this time because I'm on vacation, but I'm still going to be there. And it's Tuesday, the um, the 19th at 6 p.m. 
Pacific Standard Time. I'm say that because it's easy to convert for everybody. Uh, 9 p.m. Eastern. And uh, she's speaking on how to use marketing to raise capital. Thank you, Jim. And uh, anyone that's in the Chicagoland region, uh, the last Sunday of every month, our local GOB affiliate, the Windy City REI meets uh, in Logan Square uh, at the Navigator Tap Room. And um, if you're at any of these and, and want to meet us in person, uh, me, Alicia, Daryl, uh, make sure and, and reach out to us. And again, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it and look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you, <laughs> Esther, very much. Thank you. Thank you, Esther. Thank you, Esther. Thank you, Joby. It's Ashley Winkle. Hold on a second. <laughs> Esther is trying to say something, Esther. Yes. Yeah, you hear me? Barely. Very low. Barely. Go ahead. I, go ahead. Um, I saw a lot of people message me. Um, I didn't see the messages, so please message me on LinkedIn. I didn't read anything, so I'm not ignoring you. Um, I just didn't read. I just saw some messages, so reach me on LinkedIn, please. Sounds good. Make yeah, sure you reach that, Esther on LinkedIn. I sent Esther a private message. Uh, yeah. as a speaker, it's very hard for them to keep up with speaking and following messages. So please reach out to her, send her a DM on uh, LinkedIn or uh, comment on one of the uh, uh, one of her uh, posts or even in our post, uh, just make sure and tag her at Esther um, and uh, and she'll make sure and get back with you. And make sure when you tag her, when you reach out to her, put in a note where you where you met her like where you saw her because i bet she she gets so many dms i know she had about 20 but if you put in hey i i saw you on the the, the capital strategy session then she knows oh okay so he was there then she you know she may make a decision and say okay I'll, I'll connect but so please make sure you put a little note in there to her so that she'll know where where or who you are where you where you're from okay thank All you right. everyone Take it easy, everyone. Thank you, Esther. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.